Cam, in the next couple of years, do you see Miami still in the ACC? If not, where? Personally, I don't want to be in the Big Ten playing in November. Great question. And I guess that leads us into another topic that we had talked about last week and, you know, prep before the show. But um, the ACC approved or announced today that they are going to an unequal, uneven performance pay model. So there will be levels of on-field performance needed to be hit to have an unequal distribution. So, you know, that will determine who gets what. Um. I'm interested to see that because like remembering that football games are television shows and rankings and viewings, you know, numbers affect payouts, you know, based upon the, you know, the, 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 the sponsorship model and things like that. It'll be interesting to see um, if like just going on straight performance or if, go, if it's going on straight performance or if there's a level of viewership that's included as well, because like, you know, even if they're not the greatest, right. Florida state still did numbers. Miami's d- always done numbers. You see every season it's like, Oh, like, you know, the 10 top watched ACC games and like Miami's four of them. Now it might be, you know, three, seven, eight, well, three, five, seven, eight, ten, 10. Right. But that's more than any Wake Forest game. You know what I mean? Um, so it'll be interesting uh, from that standpoint. It's going to take a lot to get out of the grant of rights, I think. Um, this, if going to an unequal split, that is like a Band-Aid on a flesh wound, I think. You know, like I don't think that the ACC is going to be in this formation very far down the road. But the thing that I saw right after I got off the show last week on Twitter, somebody, I forget who it was, but uh, somebody posted a thing and said, you know, the other part of the conversation to get out of the grant of rights is that for the purposes of like, you know, television entertainment and, you know, like broadcasting, the schools sign over their trademarks to the conference for the time. Yeah, I saw it was in the thing. I retweeted it last week, I promise you. And I was like, that changes everything. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, so the, you know, the hurricanes from the school in South Florida or like, you know, the, it was like, yeah, it's like, it, it had this other whole intellectual property thing where it's like, yeah, you might be able to get out, but like, if you don't have the copyright to your own trademarked, you know, name and logo, you know, Im- name, image, and likeness, you know, in the way of the players, but in for your org- institution, then like you, you have to negotiate that as well, because that was a component part of the thing. So it's like, if that is true. And again, that was what was put forward in the piece uh, that I saw last week. That is another ginormous hurdle because let's say then and we'll go on the on the low side just for the sake of, of discussion right let's go on the low side and say there's 120 million dollars to get out of the grant of rights cool you get out of the grant of rights but they still have your copyright trademark right you know like that's a, i didn't know that i'm not a lawyer i'm not a, you know i'm not I but when either. i saw that from a journalist and it was clipped from, you know, whatever the conversation was of the ADs and, you know, like all that from the Amelia Island ACC, uh, you know, conference meeting and thing. That was when I was like, oh, hey, there are levels to this that we might even be uh, privy to. And obviously there would be in, you know, terms of high level governance such as this. But to your point or to your question, Tony, I don't foresee Miami being in the ACC long term. I think it's going to be a little bit further down the line than like a couple of years. I mean, I think that we're talking the TV deal is up in when 28 Mark, mm, something that like that. Right. Somewhere around there. But I think that we're going to start to see machinations around that 27, 28 time. And it might even be for a little, a couple few years further out than that. Right. But I think it's going to be yeah, probably at least five or six years until we really start to see things because 
it's you got another you know 13 years till 30 30 or 20 36 on the grand rise it's just it's too long um i said before that i think that you know miami in the big 10 fits um you know a nice academic school private school um you know miami northwestern and usc uh fit the same kind of a profile although i will say Northwestern is a better academic institution and USC is a better football program at this time. Uh, but in that kind of ilk, small private school, either near to a major city, you know, Evanston is right up the road. It's surface streets up Lakeshore drive from Chicago. Uh, and then, you know, the university of South central as they sometimes uh, jokingly call it. Uh, USC is down in the hood. Uh, I like uh, Falconer TRX do not like Miami in the sec. Um, but I think that, with crystal ball leading this program, I think that, that could be uh, where things go. I foresee. Yeah. I mean, like, I think I don't like Florida state, but I respect them. I don't, I neither like nor respect Florida. Right. So begrudgingly, but you know, truthfully, I would say if, if anybody had a landing spot tomorrow, it's Clemson and Florida state in the uh, SEC. And then the other five, everybody else, get in where you fit in, do what you do. But I think those two teams from proximity, from, you know, brand, uh, you know, kind of uh, thing, because like everybody, you know, even the they were bad and everything. And, you know, I still don't think that they're necessarily national championship good, but uh, everybody knows Florida State. Clemson's won national championships. They've been to, you know, a national championship. They've been to the playoff time and time again. Everybody, most everybody in the world of college football now knows Clemson. So I think that those two programs would have a, a home there tomorrow. I don't know that Miami would. I think that Miami would have a home in the uh, Big Ten tomorrow um, if it were to go that way. But, uh, yeah, I I would say give it a chance playing up. No- Look, we already play in Pittsburgh most you know, every year in November. You know, they gave us Boston College up there in November. Those are up north. You know, like that – you know, in a longitudinal kind of way, it's no different than going to Ann Arbor or East Lansing or, I mean, okay, maybe it's a little bit further south than like Madison or something during a snowstorm, but it's not that different, my, my friend. So um, it might not be what we want, but I would say that's probably the most logical and best fit at this time. Yeah, I don't have to educate our analyst here on weather in the Midwest in the winter because he's from Michigan. Grew up in Detroit, 313. Yeah, all the horror stories about the weather, it's very much of a wild card in November. It's not January. There's a there's a huge difference between playing football in Wisconsin or Michigan or one of those states in January versus November. Yeah. That said, I'm trying to think of the example last year. Anyway, I know that I've looked up various locales in the Big Ten footprint for November uh, temperatures, and no, it's not going to be anything close to what you're you're uh, experiencing and benefiting from in South Florida. But it's it, there is like it's unique to see snow flying in the air during a Big Ten game. It does happen. Mm-hmm. It's not infrequent. It's not like wow, this has never happened before. But it's right. not a regular thing. It's not three out of four weeks in November when teams are playing no. across the entire conference. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, 85% of the games a given weekend are all snow games. That's not, that's just not it. And again, we're already going up to Pittsburgh, which is, I mean, that's further north than Indiana, Purdue. You know, it's, just a little bit further south or on the same kind of line as like Columbus. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's there's further north than college park, Maryland, further north than Maryland. And I mean, we got Boston as well, you know, and remember guys, Boston college is one of our permanent three teams, our tent pole team. So you're going up there. And I believe this year they gave it to us in November and they're going to continue to do that because like you always want to have those kinds of things. hello, 2001. I just talked about that being maybe in the video game. Where was that game where Ed Reed uh, went off of Mike Rumpsney into Matt Walter's chest and taken by Ed Reed? Where did that happen? 
Chestnut Hill, Maryland. Which game was that? The last game they like, you know what I'm saying, guys? Like, this is not like we don't play only here and Tallahassee and, you know, Grand Cayman and the Bahamas, like we're going on a Caribbean cruise or something. You know, like there's times where you got to go a little bit further north. Um, and just you're really just shifting it from going up the East Coast to going just straight north into the Midwest with one or two school. Oh, okay. Wait. I mean, you got Madison and you got Minneapolis. Those would probably be like the furthest North, most likely chance of snow. Oh yeah. Maybe you put in Iowa city in there as well. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're talking about November, but I don't think that we're going to have all those, that many games and everything, but yeah. I know that Ohio state and Michigan kicked off at 60 degrees this past year. Now, is that on the higher end of what it typically is? Yeah, not abnormally, though, not right. egregiously. It's usually more like 50. Mm-hmm. But um, also consider that uh, four weekends in November, you're going to play two at home. So mark those off already. Mm-hmm. Then you play two on the road. If Florida State comes with Miami, who knows? The Big Ten may want that to be a later November rivalry kind of game. But, I mean, you still have to deal with the fact that Florida-Florida State is going to be last week. Yes, true. That's on rivalry week. So maybe you get, you know, the week after Halloween. So you get early November. Or yeah. something, you know. But you, yeah, that wouldn't. I was be... trying to size up. Just yeah. you, we're talking about one or two, two at the most, right? One, right? In the north in November, it's not like you're going to spend November in Wisconsin. Hopefully not. <laughs> just to just to clarify on right. the finer points, or well, the finer points are coming in future months. But to be clear about this revenue distribution as it's stating here per the ACC, the specifics of the plan are in progress and will be solidified in the coming months. Under this initiative, the implementation of the success in this incentives will come solely from the performance of teams and revenue generating postseason competition. All the other revenues will continue to be equally shared as currently outlined. Oh, okay. So they're talking college football playoff and NCAA tournament. Yeah. Interesting. And I guess bowl games okay. could be. And bowl game. Yeah. I could, okay. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. So the popularity of the teams will not factor into this. Well, and that was something I was spitballing. And then you came with the concrete statement to show me that that was a little bit off base. And I appreciate that. So, yeah. Okay. So it's not based upon popularity then. Okay. So then it's just that interesting. But again, they also said the specifics of the plan are in progress. So that's what they plan to do. But I also need to see, you know, what the final product is. I get what they're saying that this is what it will be, or they intend for it to be. But I want to see what the final product is. Yeah. And I want to see what the proportions are too. Are we talking yes. about a slight lean? Okay. You made the no. playoff. You didn't even make a bowl game. We're going to just slightly, or we're going to make this heavily incentive laden. I think they're going to, I think they're going to have to make it heavy. 